Hey there everyone, it's Asenjo again, and in this skill video we're going to be focusing on the sorceress's abilities. For the ones that are not interested in the commentary and just want to get straight through to the skills, I also have an abridged version of this video that will be linked in this video as well as in the description. Before we start with the first skills, we need to talk about the sorceress and the wizard's MP management. Anytime you use any type of magic, such as the circle button for elemental magic, or airborne pressing of square, which gives you magic missile, it consumes MP. By pressing and holding the square button, you can charge your MP back to its max as you walk around. The first four skills we will talk about are in the MP management category. The first one to mention is Mental Absorb. This is a skill that gives you MP back for every enemy you defeat. This is one of two skills used to gain MP back from attacking your enemy. The higher your level is for the skill, the more MP you're going to get back per kill. The skill is very beneficial during solo play since you're basically going to be getting all the kills. In a party, it's harder to utilize because most of the other classes will be killing things before you can get a chance since a lot of your gameplay is going to be more of a supporting role. As for your skill points, the first level gives you the Mental Absorb effect, giving you 15 MP for every kill that you get. And at max level, you will be getting 50 MP back per kill. This skill maxes out at level 10 for 26 skill points total. The next MP based skill here is Extract, and with this ability, your close range square attacks will give you MP back when you hit your enemies. This doesn't include your airborne homing magic missiles though. This is an active way to build back your MP for people who want to keep on the offensive even when they're short on MP, as long as you're getting those square attacks off. The first level of this skill grants you the MP regen effect off of your square attacks with 5 MP gain per hit, and at the max level you can regen 20 MP per hit. In terms of the skill points, Extract maxes out at level 7 for 17 skill points total. The MP skill we're going to talk about this time will be Concentrate. The skill speeds up your default MP charge skill performed by holding the square button. This is a very useful passive skill since you're going to be using the default MP charge anyway. Depending on the nature of what you're facing in each room, Sometimes it's just quicker and safer to find a good spot to grab a little bit of MP rather than attacking your enemies. This is especially useful when your MP is empty because most of your useful normal attacks will cost MP. And without MP, it'll be really hard to kill enemies without using up your spells. Another thing to add is that when there's no enemies to fight, Concentrate is going to be the best way to get your MP back in between rooms. The first level of Concentrate increases your MP charge speed by 10%, and at max level, your MP charge speed is increased to 30%. The skill maxes out at level 5 for 12 skill points total. The last MP skill we're going to talk about this time is going to be Spirit Up. The skill is pretty simple. It increases your maximum MP pool, which will give you more ammo to unleash attacks with before you have to worry about replenishing your MP. There's also gear that you can get through the game that increases your maximum MP pool on top of that. The first level of Spirit Up increases your MP pool by 30, and the max level is going to increase your MP by 150. The skill maxes out at level 5 for 12 skill points total. Before getting into the Sorcerer's Spell skills, for the people that are new to the Magic Users of Dragon's Crown, Spells act as usable items based on your tool skill, and these tools need to be equipped in your bag for their uses. Another thing to note is that spells have a cast time which can be interrupted, so be careful when and where you're casting those spells. This time though, we're going to be talking about the sorceress spell, Ice Prison. This is an ice element spell that is very useful with disrupting enemies and controlling sections of the stage. The skill creates walls of ice spires that can keep enemies trapped in or keep them trapped out so that your party can regroup, heal up, and pick off enemies as they take damage trying to get through your ice wall. The wall itself is an actual construct, so an enemy that cannot scale the wall with a jump, some type of flight or teleportation, will not be able to get through that wall until it dissipates. This also includes bosses such as a charging minotaur, or a raffle coptering death lunging killer rabbit. 
But just to let you know, as you guys know with that move, it will not take much to break that ice wall. Another fun thing to note is that Ice Prison works the same as any other Ice Element attack. So when people run into the Ice Prison, it's going to give a chance to freeze. And Ice Prison Spires can also put out fires that are on the ground. With the first level of Ice Prison, you get access to the spell with 5 uses for an 8 second duration. At max level, you get 9 uses and a 20 second duration. The skill maxes out at level 3 for 9 skill points total. The skill we're talking about this time is everyone's fan favorite sorcerer skill, which is protection. This is pretty much one of those skills that you feel like the character may have been made for, and one of the many reasons why my friends and I refer to sorceress as Team Mom. The skill is a damage reduction spell that cuts off damage all the way up to 50% less hurt. The sorceress can even get gear that further increases the damage reduction percentage. Many RPGs and MMOs have Brutal End Game, where damage reduction spells and techs are vital to continuing the game. And Dragon's Crown is definitely no exception, since later on in the game, one and two shot kills are going to be your way of life. I can't tell you how many times we were having a hard time in a dungeon, and a sorceress just pops up into our party, and we all simultaneously sign relief because mom came here to save the day. The first level of the protect skill grants you three uses of the spell, a 20 second duration, and 25% damage reduction. At max level, you get five uses of protect, 40 second duration, and a 50% damage reduction. The skill maxes out at level five for 12 skill points total. The next spell we're talking about is gonna be gravity. The gravity spell creates a gravity well in front of the sorceress, and anything that gets close enough to its gravitational pull gets sucked into the center. It's one of the only mob skills in the game that can help you gather up enemies to take them out as a group. It works amazingly well when you coordinate with your team of damage dealers, and it's really fun to combine with your other spells we're going to discuss later, such as Rock Press and Curse. Goddess forbid you have a wizard on your team that also has slow on top of your gravity, they ain't never getting out. The first level of the spell grants you access to the spell with 3 uses and 10 power in terms of damage. And the max level, it grants you 8 uses of the spell, 25 power and an increase of the gravity's pull strength. The skill maxes out at level 3 for 9 skill points total. The next spell on our list is going to be a skill called Thunderhead. Now with this spell it summons a little thundercloud that travels around for a set duration and consistently drops thunderbolts on your enemies. This skill is one of her strongest DPS spells that lets her add to the damage she's dishing out solo as well as in a party. It might not be the most accurate spell, but it's really great when you're fighting against large bosses such as the Chimera, the Kraken, and let's say the Demon King. The spell also works really well when all the floor is enemies because the lightning is going to be hitting somebody. Another good thing to note is that the skill does have a nice lengthy duration. The first level of the skill grants you access to the Thunderhead spell with 3 uses, 80 power for damage, and a 20 second duration. At max level, you end up getting 7 uses, 160 power for damage, and a 32 second duration. The skill maxes out at level 7 for 17 skill points total. The next spell, Rock Press, is definitely one of my favorites on the list. This skill drops a large boulder from the sky that me and my friends like to call the Rocky Johnson, Father of the Rock. This boulder does a large burst of damage on enemies that it hits, as well as causing a nice bit of stun. Rock Press works very well on mobbed up enemies that get caught into the sorceress's gravity. It's a very useful skill to use on troublesome champion monsters and mini bosses that can get stunned that will take a while to shut down. It'll definitely give your character the chance to put in some well deserved free damage. At the first level you're granted access to the Rock Press spell with 5 uses and 350 power for damage. And at max level, you get 9 spell uses and 875 power for damage. The skill maxes out at level 7 for 17 skill points total. Blizzard is another fan favorite spell of the sorceress that solidifies her with the title of Team Mom. The spell Blizzard lets the sorceress drop a full screen ice spell that consistently hits for a set duration. Because it's an ice based skill and called Blizzard, 
It has chances for freeze on every hit of the spell, and it can completely neutralize a ground that's on fire. It's one of the best crowd control skills in the game that just completely says nope to any mob or fire related nonsense that might be taking up the screen and bothering the sorceress's kids. It may not be a very damaging spell, but freezing everyone on a stage is more than you can ask for in most foobar situations. The first level of the skill grants you access to the spell with 3 uses, 35 power for each hit of the blizzard, and a 4 second duration. The max level of the skill gives you 5 uses, 50 power for each blizzard hit, and a 10 second duration. The skill maxes out at level 5 for 12 skill points total. The next skill animate skeleton lets a sorceress turn adventurer bones into warrior skeletons that fight on your behalf. You can raise the dead by hitting the square button next to any pile of adventurer bones. Each level of the skill is going to increase the strength and durability of each of your kids based on the percentage of your level. You can have 4 skeletons in a party at a time, so you can't have anything silly like 16 skeletons in a party of 4 sorceress because that would be legitimately ridiculous. But you can have one sorceress summon, let's say, four skeletons, or two sorceress summon two each. The skill is great in solo play since you'll have a team that you can support and take hits for you. And having a party of eight is sometimes better than having a party of four. One thing you have to keep in mind is that in later endgame it will be hard to keep your skeletons alive, so think about that when you're investing in this skill. On a side note, you can heal your skeletons with anything that heals your HP, such as food, potions, and runes. So you can literally be eating for four. Another thing to note is that some spells will work on your skeleton, such as protection. One more thing to note is that if you have a skeleton that's on low HP, you can refresh it by creating a new skeleton from a pile of bones, which is going to discard one skeleton and raise one new one at full HP. The first level of the skill gives you access to the animate skeleton effect that lets you animate one skeleton whose level is 50% of the sorceress's current level. At max level you can have four skeletons that are at the exact same level of your sorceress. This skill maxes out at level 5 for 12 skill points total. With this next skill levitation, your sorceress basically gets an air dash when hitting the X button after a double jump. The skill also adds a nice passive for each level that increases the damage of your airborne attacks. For me personally, this skill feels like a no-brainer because there's only 3 levels to max out of this skill and the damage increase you get for airborne attacks is pretty great. Getting this skill will definitely reward you for attacking in the air while avoiding the nonsense that is the ground of Dragon's Crown. The first level of this skill gives you the actual levitation air dash with 20% damage boost for any airborne attack, and at the max level, you get a 50% damage boost for all airborne attacks. The skill maxes out at level 3 for 9 skill points total. This next spell, Create Food, further adds to the Sorceress Team Mom nickname. With this skill, the Sorceress can create much needed food to heal her party and create usable weapons that you can find in the dungeon like crossbows, bombs, and daggers. She can even create boulders for the dwarf to throw, wooden containers for the wizard to create golems with, and adventurer's bones for her to be able to create more skeletons with. The sorceress literally brings the food and the fun to her team, just like any mom would. The more you level the skill, the more food and items that you're going to be able to summon for each spell use. The first level of the skill gives you access to the spell with 5 uses. And the max level gives you 9 uses of create food and a larger creation count for the food and items that you get to use. The skill maxes out at level 5 for 10 skill points total. The sorcerer's spell curse is a very good disabling skill that can turn your enemies into defenseless frogs. This is a move that's very useful when it comes to dealing with troublesome champion monsters. Monsters like the Black Goblins, the Green Orcs, and the true boss of the game, the Assassin Pirates, hit a lot harder, are a lot more durable, and take a lot longer to kill than most of your normal enemies, so hitting them with a curse will give you a much easier time clearing out a room. The higher you level the spell, the more activation hops that you're going to get for your frog curse which is going to mean more distance and more overall coverage to curse the enemies in front of you. 
As for the skill points, the first level of the skill grants you access to the curse spell with 5 uses and 1 activation hop. And at the max level you get 9 uses of the spell and 3 activation hops for distance. The skill maxes out at level 3 for 9 skill points total. The last skill we will be talking about is the Sorceress spell Petrification. With this spell, the Sorceress casts a high chance of petrification effect on the entire room, very similar to that of Petrify the Flesh aka the POF room. This move is similar to Blizzard in that you can basically just say nope to most of the mob on the screen that may be giving your kids trouble. There are pros and cons to it when comparing it to Blizzard. As for its pros, the Petrify status effect lasts a lot longer than the actual freeze effect that happens with Blizzard. This spell gets more uses than Blizzard, and the Sorceress can even get gear that gives a chance to instant KO enemies that are petrified when you hit them. As for cons, this move does not do damage, which means using it on bosses that don't have mobs is basically useless. Also, this skill cannot put out ground fires like Blizzard can. As for the skill points, the first level of petrification gives you access to the spell at 3 uses and a 5 second petrification duration. And at max level you get 7 uses of the spell and 15 seconds of petrification. This skill maxes out at level 7 for 17 skill points total. That's going to be about it for this sorcerer skill video. As always, I really do appreciate anybody that did take their time out of the day to check this out. And I hope this helps some of you get a good idea of what the sorceress can do with her skills. The next skill video that we are going to be doing is going to be for the fighter. So I heard you guys love the block. And I really hope I'm right, because if you're going to be playing fighter, you're going to be doing a lot of that. For the ones that did follow my other Dragon's Crown skill videos, sorry it took so long to get this next one out, but real life kind of caught up with me and I couldn't find the time to edit. But we're going to be at least finishing this game roster. But as always, thanks for giving me the time of day.